Yeah, you know who it is. And for those of you that don't, I'm Satonius, the opposite of the phoniest from Speak Geek Unlimited. And today I'll be discussing the Netflix series, Luke Cage. Where writers of superheroes set out to make characters, they seem to ask the question, what makes this character heroic? What personality traits can we use to make this character marketable and acceptable to a mainstream audience? But when it comes to black comic book characters, writers and creators often ask the question, how can I make this character connect with a black audience? How can I make this character acceptable to a white audience without making the character a negative stereotype? For black fans of comic books and superheroes, there seems to be a void of popular black superheroes in the mainstream. The closest thing we've had in terms of a well-known black superhero was Wesley Snipes as the Marvel character Blade, and more recently, Luke Cage. Luke Cage is a character born from the black exploitation era of film. That era of film reflected a post-civil rights, post-Vietnam, anti-establishment version of black masculinity that embodied an honorable but slightly toxic version of black heroism. Characters like Shaft and Dolomite were either jaded cops or pimps turned anti-hero. Luke Cage existed as the anti-Superman. Where Superman was an innocent country bumpkin, Cage was a cynical, world-weary street dude. Where Superman was a wait-till-marriage type of character, Luke Cage was hypersexual. Because Luke Cage exists as Superman's opposite, and Superman is one of the most merchandisable characters, the question arises how do we bring Luke Cage into the mainstream? Or does Luke Cage even need to be in the mainstream? One of the main problems with Luke Cage is that he isn't altruistically heroic. Back in the mid-2000s, director John Singleton had plans to do a live-action Luke Cage film with Tyrese or 50 Cent as Luke Cage. And we could talk about how shitty that would have been in another video at another time, but the film was never made. Fast forward to September 30th, 2016, and we have Netflix's Luke Cage. Starring Mike Coulter as Luke Cage, this series is... interesting. Following the critically acclaimed first season of Daredevil and Jessica Jones, each of the Netflix Marvel shows seems to inject some type of topical and socially relevant theme in their series. Daredevil was a series about the gray areas of justice. Jessica Jones was a show about rape and post-traumatic stress syndrome. Luke Cage follows the trend and makes the show about being black in 2016. It deals with police brutality, black empowerment, urban crime, and it does it with a soundtrack rooted in 1970s funk and 1990s hip-hop aesthetics. Luke Cage as a character is always a reflection of black masculinity of a particular era. In the 1970s when Cage was created, he was more like Jim Brown and Shaft. In the 1980s, the black standard of masculinity was dominated by comedians like Eddie Murphy and Bill Cosby. So it's not surprising that Luke Cage didn't have a very strong presence during that time. In the 90s, Luke Cage was redesigned in the mold of a Bo Jackson Wesley Snipes from Passenger 57 type of aesthetic. Once we got to the 2000s where hip-hop culture solidified black masculinity as mostly thugged out, Luke Cage's look reflected that. What the Netflix series does is it takes Luke Cage and it makes him a cornball. Yeah man, Mike Coulter as Luke Cage, it's pretty corny. The problem with Luke Cage as a character is that no matter what you do with him, he'll be offensive to someone. If you make him too black, you run the risk of alienating white people. If you make him not black enough, you run the risk of alienating black people. The mistakes that the show makes with Luke Cage is that they stripped him of his defining trait, and that's power. I mean, he's power man. This version of Luke Cage doesn't feel powerful or commanding. Luke Cage should be an alpha male, but Coulter plays him as kind of a docile, sensitive type of character. The problem with this show is that it pussyfoots around its blackness. The show is all in with references to the Wu-Tang Clan and Gangstar, but Coulter doesn't even look or act like someone that likes rap music. The references to hip-hop culture in the series seem to be a checklist of things you have to speak on in a black show rather than a genuine inclusion of elements of the culture. For me to say that Mike Coulter was miscast as Luke Cage is an understatement. 
The real stars of the show are Simone Missick as Misty Knight and Marshala Ali as Cornell Cottonmouth Stokes. They give genuine performances and these are the only two characters that have a story arc I care about. Cottonmouth is written in the mold of Wilson Fisk, a precise crime lord with a traumatic past that molded him into the cold, calculating, and sadistic person he is today. Misty Knight is a driven and focused detective who doesn't just fight crime, she stalks it. Another great character in the series is Henry Pops Hunter. Pops is the owner of Pops Barbershop in Harlem where Luke works. He got his name during his time as a gang member from the sound his knuckles made when he punched his victims. In the series, Pops is Luke's version of Uncle Ben from Spider-Man, and he's the inspiration for Luke becoming the hero of Harlem. Pops' proclamation of always move forward is this show's version of with great power comes great responsibility. Other characters in the series include Mariah Dillard, aka Black Mariah played by Alfre Woodard, who instead of an overweight gang leader like she is in the comics, she's a corrupt politician and the cousin of Cottonmouth, who are both the grandchildren of Harlem crime boss Mama Mabel Stokes. Mariah is an interesting character because she's different than Cottonmouth in the sense that while he indulges in the criminal lifestyle, she just views it as a means to an end. Mariah's main goal is to use Cottonmouth and his criminal resources to rebuild and uplift Harlem. Mariah and Cottonmouth are opposite sides of the same coin. While Mariah wants to rebuild Harlem and make it a better place to live, Cottonmouth wants to control it through crime and fear. The series is pretty much a war for the soul of Harlem. That's why, in my opinion, I think that Luke Cage not being from Harlem was a bad creative decision. In the series, Luke is a southern boy. I feel like this was done to remove the possibly toxic urban elements from the character. But what this does is it removes an important element from the character. Luke Cage is a hero for the people. He's street level, and whether or not you think that's a bad thing, that's an important part of the character. I think Luke Cage works best when he's a street dude from the projects. Showrunner Chael Hidori Cocker seems to want to use this show to rebrand Luke Cage as the upstanding positive avatar for black American superheroes. And while that's commendable, I don't think that Luke Cage is the character for that. The appeal of Luke Cage and any other black superhero shouldn't just be that they're black, it should be that they're compelling characters. When characters aren't allowed to have any pathos or character conflict, for the sake of being too altruistic, the character becomes stale. Characters like Batman, Wolverine, and Jessica Jones are appealing because they have internal character conflict. They have something inside of them that's broken and that they need to overcome. Luke Cage in the series doesn't have that. The series can be broken into two conflicts. Luke Cage and Misty versus Cottonmouth and Luke Cage versus Diamondback. This show has a serious identity crisis. It doesn't know if it wants to be New York Undercover or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. but in the hood. The show we were promised was The Wire but with superpowers, but I think that's a bit of a stretch. The first half of the series starts strong and brings us into Harlem with Luke being on the run and working in a barbershop run by Pops Hunter. To me the first half is the best part of the series, which has a lot to do with the whole battle for the soul of Harlem angle. The writers keep this part of the series focused and grounded. The conflict between Luke and Cottonmouth is all about physical power versus the power of fear and social and financial status. But all of that gets shitted on when Cottonmouth is killed and Diamondback shows up played by Eric LeRae Harvey. Diamondback is portrayed as an ominous and dangerous villain, but he feels like he's in the wrong show. The closest comparison I can think is how in the recent Power Rangers movie, Rita was a cartoonish over the top character and everyone else was more down to earth. In the series, Willis Stryker is the half-brother of Carl Lucas, aka Luke Cage. Stryker's motivations for being a villain in the series are very weak. Stryker hates Luke because Stryker feels he got the short end of the stick within the Lucas family as the unwanted child of an extramarital affair with Luke's mother. A lot of Diamondback's motivation and origin in the series are actually borrowed from the comic character Coldfire, who is Luke's real brother named James Lucas Jr. The Diamondback vs. Luke Cage conflict changes the whole rhythm of the show. The battle for the soul of Harlem changes to a brother vs. brother issue between Luke and Diamondback that comes out of nowhere and doesn't match for what was set up early in the season. 
The series should have made Mariah Dillard the main villain of the second half of the show and used Diamondback as the villain of the second season. The show was filled with secondary characters, some of them I mentioned before like Misty Knight and Mariah Dillard. Other characters like Shades and Claire Temple make Harlem feel like it's a fully realized universe. To the people that feel like I might be going in on the show or that I didn't enjoy it, that's just not the case. I think that the show could have been a lot better. I understand the slippery slope that I'm on. Any critique of black culture can be viewed as hating or looked at as a lack of appreciation for our culture. But this isn't the case. I love comic books and I love superheroes. And while Luke Cage isn't my favorite character, his significance and position in comic book superhero culture is a double-edged sword. But to keep it real, I think that's what makes the character unique. Luke Cage is always going to be a product of his time, no matter what time he's in. Luke Cage isn't just a comic book character. He's an observation and representation of the black male experience in America. And while Netflix's Luke Cage isn't the first or the last black-centered superhero TV show, it's definitely the one that has the most riding on it. Do I think Luke Cage was a failure? Nah, far from it. Netflix's Luke Cage is the furthest thing from a bad TV show and far from a failure. It just suffers from the same thing that a lot of media designed for black people suffer from. It can't please everyone and it's not nor should it be the singular voice for black people. That should never be the purpose of any creative endeavor. With season two of Luke Cage dropping later this year, I hope that the second season learns from the mistakes of the first. I hope it focuses on tighter storytelling and better character development for Luke Cage. I don't really have a rating system for any of these. I just like to discuss shows and movies that I like a lot or that I have a strong opinion about. So with that being said, I'm still Satonius and I'm still the opposite of the phonies. And this is still Speak Geek Unlimited and I assume that completes our business. Y'all Harlem niggas off the hook. I'm going back to Hell's Kitchen where it's safe. <laughs>